experiences um, it's uh, it's difficult to explain exactly what it was like um, you know being the leader having to guide your soldiers through a hellish landscape that jungle filled with mosquitoes and malaria and disease it's uh, it's difficult to maintain you know your composure to make sure that nobody loses their minds or gets shell-shocked from everything around them. And um, when I was with the men humping it through the jungle, carrying all the, all the supplies, the, the food, the, the weapons, and, and the annoying radio, I was about 40 pounds, um, we really had to bond. And um, at the beginning I was a bit distant with them because I, uh, I was in love. There was a girl back home, and she uh, she gave me this little picture, this uh, a photo, I guess, of uh, of her in, in a, playing volleyball. And uh, you wouldn't believe how in love I was with this girl. She was she was beautiful, and she was smart, and she was off in college, and here I was fighting a war that um, no one really knew why we were fighting. So how did this girl affect doing what it was you did? Well, um, a lot of the time I was distracted, thinking about her constantly, just, you know, digging holes at night when we were sleeping in the trenches, and I just, I would daze off thinking about her and, and wondering what it would be like when I got home and, and how we would spend our life together. And um, it wasn't until one day when we were, uh, we were waiting side of a road, and um, it was quiet. Nothing really happened. It was a nice day. The rain wasn't falling. And um, we were waiting. And Lavender, <sighs> dope head, was doing his usual tranquilizers, horse tranquilizers. And um, he went off into the jungle to go to the bathroom. And um, as we were sitting in those trenches, bullets started flying everywhere, all around us. Everybody was shooting back, and we were we were stuck. We didn't know what to do, and um, a bullet went right into Lavender's head, and he just dropped. And I remember thinking to myself, "Well, that's it. He's he's gone. I I I couldn't save him. Nobody could save him." And then we had wrapped his body up in tarp and sent him on a helicopter. We went um went home and you know to go rest in peace and uh, and that's when I went back and I realized that um, she never truly loved me and I uh, I burned the photo that night and I became stricter in guiding my men because their lives were on my on my hands and I couldn't couldn't daydream I had to always be there for them and that's when serious our, uh, our regiment. So after all that happened, what was the transition like going home? Well, it was really difficult. Um, you go home and those things that you see and that you do, all that always sticks with you forever. There's, there's no letting go. It's in your dreams. It's constantly in your mind. And um, I had gone back and visited her in college. And um, I saw her and I knew once again that I was completely in love with this girl. And um, we got to talking, and I was so nervous, you know, thinking about asking her in my room and, and, and whatnot. And she, uh, she 
turned to me and I can't really repeat what she said, but um, we couldn't be together. And uh, I knew that, but I still loved her. She turned around and gave me another copy of that photo that I had. And then I knew everything was going to be okay somehow. I believe